Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and you know, I really hate it when a family breaks apart. Stop me if you heard this one before, but you got you and your siblings, you're taking on the world together, life's beating you down, you've got an ancient race of eldritch octopi enslaving your entire race, and then one day, you find a way to annihilate all those emo squid words and free your people from their tyranny, only for the ensuing argument over where you should go from there to create a schism between you and the rest of your family. See? I told you you've heard this one before. And so today, we will be talking about the faction of Gith that chose the superior way to live with their newfound freedom, the Gith Yankee. I'm gonna go over everything about the Gith Yankee as presented in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes from their days freed from the Illithids and beyond, and as always, remember that a lot of this is just my opinion. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So if you've seen my Mind Flayer guide, then you know about how the Mind Flayers used the Gith race as slaves up until the Gith revolted and wiped out the entire Illithid civilization. It was at this point that the Gith had a choice to make. They could either continue their warmongering ways and move on to conquer the rest of the multiverse, or they could focus their efforts inward and seclude themselves from the world so that they could continue to nurture a better civilization than the one they were freed from. Ultimately, the two factions split apart, with the Warmongers naming themselves Gith Yankee, and the Seclusionists naming themselves Gith Zarai. The two groups decided henceforth to become mortal enemies, with battles raging whenever any Gith from opposing groups are brought together. But this video isn't about what the Gith have in common, it's about what's different. So, let's take some time to focus on the angry and stabby boys and girls of the Gith Yankee. In the time between freedom and nowadays, the Gith Yankee have become subservient to a dreadlich queen named Vlakith. And, shocking as it may sound, this has not done much to improve their people skills. The Gith Yankee are born in reverence to Vlakith, they train in reverence to Vlakith, and they will die in reverence to Vlakith. Ironically, it seems that the Gith Yankee have, in essence, traded out one ruling class for another. But how did this come to be? Well, during the big insurrection against the Illithids, Vlakith contacted Gith, as in the goddess known as Gith who named the race, not the Gith who are the race she named, and she told her that if Gith wants her people to win this war, they will need allies, and Vlakith suggested the totally trustworthy Tiamat, who lives in the totally trustworthy Nine Hells. Gith said, that sounds reasonable, and ventured down into the hells to seek audience with the evil dragon lady. After a little while, the ancient dragon named Aphelamon came to THE Gith, as in the Gith race, not Gith, the goddess of the Gith, and told them that Tiamat and Gith were total bros now, and she pledged their dragons to always support and aid the Gith forevermore. She also murmured something under her breath about how Vlakith was in charge until Gith got back from the Nine Hells, but she changed the subject soon after, it wasn't important. Ever since then, the Gith Yankee have become vicious marauders, raiding, killing, and pillaging in the name of their new leader, flying in ass astral barges across the entire multiverse, with the mightiest and killiest of them going on to be revered as Gith Yankee Knights, wielding silver greatswords and psionic magic with equal efficiency, and riding their mighty red dragons into battle like an 80s glam rock cover. While on these raids, all Gith Yankee look to crush whatever new opponent Vlakith has sent them after, but they will drop everything if they think there might be a Mind Flayer nearby. If the Gith Yankee catch wind of a squiddy colony, they will stop at nothing to find the source and burn any and all hentai that they can find, because they don't want to be reminded of the days of old where they were forced to go out and serve an evil overlord that would do them harm. Those days are over. Nothing is wrong now. Everything is good now. But as much as I like to poke holes in the thought process of the Gith Yankee, they truthfully are better off without the Mind Flayers, as they have at least managed to carve out a modicum of normal life within the boundless Astral Sea, inside a skeletal body of a dead god that they renovated into a nice summer home called Tunarath, the City of Death. This quaint little fortress is where the Gith Yankee who don't pillage spend most of their time, and since Tunarath is situated in the Astral Sea, time doesn't flow, so they quite literally literally have all the time in the world. The Gith Yankee use this time to get creative, learning about all the things that they never had time for while under the rule of the Squidbillies. From painting, to music, to interpretive dance, to stand-up comedy, Gith Yankee dabble in anything and everything that could add a modicum of enjoyment to their meaningless lives. Granted, they lose interest in things just as quickly as they gain it, so while most Gith Yankee are versed in the many different facets of life, very few can really call themselves masters of anything but murder. But in case you wanted to go on murderous raids with your own alien archetype, the Gith Yankee get a bonus to strength and intelligence, a free language and tool proficiency, proficiency with medium armor as well as swords, and psionic powers that manifest in the form of the spells Mage Hand, Jump, and Misty Step. It's a little weird giving a race a bonus to both strength and intelligence, since really, in terms of classes, they don't have much to do with each other, but they are perfect if you want to make an Eldritch Knight or a Warlock with a Blade Pact. I do think it's hilarious that they also get Jump, because, I mean, if the spell has to exist, then it might as well be given away for free, because it just lets you jump higher. And overall, this is a pretty balanced race that really needs to see a lot more love, because I have never, ever, ever seen a GIF played in one of my games, Yankee or otherwise. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and comment if you did. Subscribe, pledge, blah. Don't hollow out the bodies of dead gods to live in them because it is not free real estate. And maybe support me on Patreon to fund the ever-growing search against the squid menace. But yeah, Davy out.